Come on. Oh. Sorry. Hello Whovians and welcome to my latest Doctor Who review where today I review Warriors of the Sleep. Sorry, sorry, did I say sleep? I meant deep. The Warriors... Warriors of the Deep. So, Warriors of the Sleep. The synopsis of this story, if story is a word I can use to apply to this, is that basically Earth... 2084, two global superpowers hover on the brink of war. When the TARDIS is forced to make an unplanned visit to Sea Base 4, the Fifth Doctor, Tegan and Turlow, find themselves accused of being enemy agents. Quickly embroiled in a deadly game of paranoid intrigue, it becomes clear that others on the base have sabotage and murder in mind. However, there is a greater threat to mankind, the Silurians and the Sea Devils. Ooh! Prehistoric reptiles seeking to reclaim the Earth. Can the Doctor prevent them from imp implementing their final solution and triggering a war that could wipe out the entire human race? You know what? Who cares? Me. Not me. I do not give a fuck. <coughs> Literally, I want to strangle this story. <laughs> I don't know where to begin with this one. Warriors of the Deep. This is a crap Talk to Who story. This story is fucking awful. It really is. It's... Oh my god. It was a fucking snail to get through. Such a slow story. I mean, again, the word story doesn't really apply to this because I don't know what the story was. I mean, until I read that synopsis, I had no fucking clue what the hell was going on. I couldn't follow this story. And I don't know if it's meant to be a difficult story to follow, but... I just, it didn't grab me. I, I was not interested. This story is, is also, it's incredibly cheap. Look, that's the worst thing about it. It's incredibly cheap. And <laughs> some of the effects are just so, so laughable. You've got this massive dinosaur lizard thing called the Merka, which is so obviously like two or three guys in a suit. And it looks like kind of, um, like it's got the color of a gherkin or something. It's so stupid. It goes around, it actually... You can actually hear the guys vocalizing it um, when the other soldiers are attacking it. You hear, you hear the guys go, <laughs> so bad. I was laughing the entire time. I just, I, I couldn't contain myself. It was terrible. It was really terrible. And it's only in the two, parts two and three of the story. It gets killed in part three. So what was the point of even having it there? It was an excuse to have it for an action scene. Moreover, what I hate about this story most is the direction. This story is badly directed by Pennant Roberts. Now, Pennant Roberts actually does have a few good credits to his name. Um, I've got a list here of some of his some of his names. It's uh, he's he's directed The Face of Evil, The Sunmakers, The Pirate Planet, Sharda, Warriors of the Deep, and Time Lash. So he's got some mixed qualities <laughs> as a director, but with this. He cannot direct. I'm sorry. This this story just falls apart. I mean, he makes the action scenes, you know, with people just standing there shooting. Literally, it's so boring. He's like, just stand there and shoot. That's all they do. It is so dull and it is so boring to watch. And moreover, the pacing of this story is fucking slow. Slow. Oh. Literally, it moves like a fucking snail. It moves, it moves like a snail who's exasperated. Speaking of exasperated, <laughs> Peter Davison in this story, bless him, he is trying. He's got a new haircut, actually, which is which suits him. But once again, he's still, um, he's still exasperated in this story, which does prove to be quite, uh, quite amusing at times. But his acting is actually quite good, and he is trying his best. Same with Janet Fielding and Mark Strickson, but they cannot save the story. There's also this device where, um which they use to try and defeat the, um, the Merka, um, 
it's, I don't know, it's like some kind of radiation gun or something. It, it, it's never really explained. I don't know what it is. And the doctor uh, keeps saying to Tegan, Make a wish, Tegan! <laughs> it's... Why? I don't know. I, I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense. The, the story just doesn't make any sense. It's, it's very... It's, it's a little convoluted. I can't really follow it. Like, and all the supporting cast are shit. With the exception of one person who plays um, Dr. Karina, um, Nitsa Saul. Um, she's very good, actually. She's the only good person um, in, the, in the supporting cast. But I also like Ingrid Pitts. She's, she's good. So, okay, there's two good people in the supporting cast. But when, um, I mean, Karina's death is so stupid, when she just karate kicks the murker and then she gets zapped, she goes, ah, yes, <laughs> so bad. I mean, the cheapness of this story is just paramount. It just takes it over so much. Like I said, the murker looks crap. Even the sets look shit. I mean, the sets are just basic. They're just white corridors. And they're overly lit, which is which is awful. I mean, the lighting of this story is terrible. They could have t turned down the lighting to make it more atmospheric, but no, they brighten things up for no reason. It it just it just shows that they just didn't care about this story. I mean, part of me thinks that they put so much effort and money into the Five Doctors that this story had to suffer either way. So, I think regardless of of um, of the script quality, I think the story would have looked cheap either way. The script itself is just boring. Uh, Johnny Byrne wrote the script and, well, it's not much of a script. I mean, the story is boring. It shouldn't be because it's, you know, kind of two factions going against each other. And it just doesn't work for me. It, it just is so boring. It's so slow. It drags for all four parts of its runtime. Also, the costumes of the um, the people on the space station look ridiculous. They look like they're wearing raincoats and they've just overlaid certain stitching and, and patterns on them just to make them look a bit more snazzy, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, the costumes are awful. They, they really don't look very good, uh, in my opinion. And, oh, God, the worst thing, another thing about this story which I hate is Turlo. Turlo is awful in this story, not because of Mark Strickson. His performance is fine, but... They wrote the character much differently. In the end of part one, the Doctor gets thrown into this um, this pool of water. And Tegan wants to go and help the Doctor. But Tur Turlo's like, no, there's nothing we can do. Leave him. It's like, come on, Turlo, don't be a dick. You know, you, the Doctor's your friend. You wanted, you wanted to learn more with him. So go and help him. Like, Turlo's just a complete arse in this. Like, there was no need for that. That was out of character. I thought that moment was a bit ridiculous, to be honest. None of these supporting cast are any good. The, their performances are flat. The characters are all one-dimensional. This is just nothing. Like, this story is completely nothing. I I don't know what else to say. I, there, I mean, there, there is nothing going on here. Also, this story brings back the Silurians and the Sea Devils. The Sea Devils look okay, even though they still look a bit cheap. And they, they, do, they just sound a bit like the Ice Warriors. They talk, they whisper like this. Um, which which is get which is all right, but it's kind of annoying after all. Worse than them are the Silurians. The Silurians look fucking terrible in this story. The makeup is is awful. The voices are ridiculous. The the, the pitching of the voices is is ridiculous. They just sound really weird, and they keep saying "excellent," much like the Cybermen did in Earthshock. So. Yeah, this is this is a really crap story, and also for for most of the story, that they don't do anything. The Sea Devils and the Silurians, they don't do anything. They just stay in their cave. It also it takes Davison and the companions fifteen minutes into the first part before they actually arrive on the space station. Fifteen minutes? That is far too long. I mean, they they, they did the same thing in the space pirates with Troughton. Him, Jamie, and Zoe didn't arrive there until the first fifteen minutes. So. Right there, you've, you've got a problem. They padded out the story so much. Um, this is totally a forgettable story, totally unnecessary. I really didn't like the story at all. Uh, the only good things I'll say about it are Davison and Janet Fielding and Mark Strickson. And actually, the soundtrack I quite like. There are moments where the soundtrack sounds a bit like James Bond. Yeah, it's, it's just really not very good. I mean, I know a lot of you were expecting me to do a big rant on this story, but to be honest... I don't have a lot to say about it. It's it's a negative review, but I, I can't honestly... I can't think of what else to say about it. Uh, I've seen worse. It's not it's not the worst story that Davison has done. I mean, that goes to Time Flight. But at the same time, this was a total waste of potential. The fact that you were bringing back the Sea Devils and the Silurians is, is really bad. 
and you fucked both of them up. So there we go. I mean, I suppose, like, the idea is kind of alright, but it's just not really executed very well. <laughs> I'm not going to be rushing back to this one anytime soon. In terms of a rating for this story, uh, I'm kind of been struggling to think of a rating for this one. I can't really give it any more than... I'm going to have to give it a 2 out of 10. Not a big explosive ramp because there's not a lot to say. It's just very poor. Very poor indeed. So, uh, what, a, what a terrible way to kick off Davison's third and final season. But uh, next time we move on to The Awakening, which is actually only a two-part story, so it should be easier to get through, and hopefully it's better than this. I mean, it better be. And that's it. We've, we've only got, after this, there's about four, four more Davison stories left, so we're almost reaching the end of his era, so not too long to go. But anyway, um, thank you all very much for watching and listening to this review slash rant. And stay tuned next time when I review The Awakening. So until next time, I'm Mr. Tardis11. See you soon. Bye for now.